fine. Okay. Some of you, some of them must be knowing, and some of them must m might not be knowing that the our home has been taken away by uh, visitors. You see, and when we are standing outside of the home where it is raining and snowing, and we're in such a trouble. The Tibet problem is not a small problem of uh, individuals or group of people. It is uh, in fact a problem of humanity and uh, the uh, uh, suffering of Tibet people is a symptom of human uh, pervasive uh, problem. Human rights uh, violated at one place means human rights uh, is violated at uh, every place or anywhere. So it is a crime against humanity. How is that important for us? Well, it's important for us because if we don't defend human rights elsewhere, how can you defend them at home? And when you have terrorists bombing Paris, then on the basis of what are you going to oppose them if you don't oppose other people's being killed elsewhere? It's exactly the same problem, whether it is moral, ecological, whether it is because of trade or commerce or culture, it's always it's in interdependence. And uh, in that matter, uh, we have to deal it uh, at a global level and uh, uh, with a sense of urgency because uh, Tibet as a, a nation uh, and uh, a very unique cultural heritage is now at the verge of a complete extinction. And uh, if uh, humanity, human community could not save uh, this uh, unique culture, it would be a pity and it would be a kind of um, uh, setback in the human development and the civilization as a whole. Well, I think the most important today is that uh, now the very survival of Tibet is at risk. All right, if we can <coughs> we cannot do something constructive about Tibet within the next uh, uh, 10, 15 years, that may it may be the end of Tibet. It may be the end of Tibetan civilization. It may be the end of Tibetan culture. Tibetan culture is important for the West because a culture that was, this culture was based on altruism, compassion, and kindness. We have nothing like that left. This is high civilization. And if this disappears from the face of the earth, I think we're all in a great deal of trouble and we've lost something very precious. I think maybe, I cannot say we have, but the Tibetan may be having a special, extraordinary uh, traditions which uh, I feel which can be able to share to the whole world, to give, like some sort of compassion, some of, you know, which can give, which can bring more peace into this world, you see. Mm -hmm. Why have all these people all around the world, people of all kinds, the scientists, the educationists, the professors, the politicians, the president, the dukes, you know, all these people, why do they converge here? And because they feel that there's a value in the Tibetan system. 
whatever, whatever value they see it, which I can't explain it, okay? They feel that Tibetans are quite different. They have something that, uh, that we can share with them, that we can learn from them. So they all come here and, uh, and we are happy to share whatever we have. What we have been doing is um, starting out from 1966 on um, a series of week-long conferences uh, with His Holiness Dalai Lama in Dharamsala, bringing a few five, six Western sciences, scientists of mind and life, not just any science, but the mind and life, to Dharamsala to have a really in-depth dialogue with him. Why are we doing that is because um, the, there is this natural interface between the learning that Buddhism has accumulated on mind and consciousness from its own spirit of observation and discovery and what science needs to continue to explore today, mind and consciousness. If you look at what is happening today within science, the study of human consciousness is a tremendously central and important topic. Not only is central for scientists, it's central for the future of our culture. So traditions such as the Tibetans who have specialized in the understanding of what is mind and what is consciousness are particularly relevant, like maybe traditions who would have a particularly subtle understanding of, say, ecology or about plants. All of these are contributions which really make this phrase global conversation real. That is, let's learn from those who have these particular degrees of know-how and speciality. From the Buddhism point of view, I feel it's called science of mind. You see, therefore, uh, it tells mostly also on the, the it concentrates. You see, it concentrates also on the on the mind. So, mind in the science in this world in this world, uh, whatsoever we do, is through the mind. And since uh, in such a religion which tells more on mind. I think every people loves to uh, participate and try to know and try to exchange, you see, the cultures. Nonviolence. In in one word, I would say nonviolence. Um, since such a trouble is going on inside Tibet, what I feel is the uh, we should take it as a compa in compassion form. You see, through that way, uh, even if somebody is uh, hurting you, you should, we should uh, take a uh, we should. Take it uh, in, in the form of compassion form. Since we, since we believe reincarnation means I can be your brother and you can be my brother. And if you are Chinese, for, for example, I'm sorry, if you are Chinese, you see, and I am Tibetan right now, and I can be your brother, I, and you can be my brother in one of my lifetimes, and how can I hate you? The violence will always cause problems. Violence, violence will always cause violence. So I feel the violence should be solved by peace, not by violence. The His Holiness path of peace to get to get our country back is the only means to fight, not through the violence.